Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a space weather news update Thursday, March 31st, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Now, a lot has happened since we last spoke. We, the last update was on the M1.3 solar flare or the X1.3 solar flare, but we've now had an M9.6 just a few hours ago, basically an X flare. So we have two X flares now headed to Earth as we were waiting for the powerful cannibal sunblast to collide with us. And it did collide in a lackluster way. Barely brought us to a uh, geomagnetic storm for six hours, KP5, the rest of the time in geomagnetic instability. Now, what happened here? And first, let me explain what a cannibal CME is. It's when two shoot out and the one behind it is faster than the initial. So the, the rear one catches up with the front one and overtakes it. That's the cannibal CME. That's all that means. Now, what happened in this case is that the fields, the interplanetary, the magnetic fields in the CMEs themselves might have canceled themselves out or the Earth's magnetic field at the time of impact might have canceled out some of the effects. Certainly, the, so, the speed was uh, correct because it impacted at the right time, but the density was not so good. Because the effects, well, they're lackluster. But we did get, in fact, mid-latitude auroras, even though we only got to KP5. Earth's magnetic field on March 31st. Here is a picture from the G1-class geomagnetic storm, much weaker than the G3 storm that was expected, but still enough to spark auroras across multiple northern U.S. states, including North Dakota here. Elon Gain sends this picture in from the shore of Lake Darling. And some beautiful auroras there in North Dakota from just a very low-level G1 storm. Now, you can see here the impact about 24 hours ago. Like I, I said, you would see, you would see a jump up in all of the telemetry at the same time. So density, speed, and temperature all up at the same time. You can see the phi angle go, ver go haywire at the same time. And also the BZ go a little bit haywire. Now... We, should, we could see some reverberations from that geomagnetic storm. You see here the speed is going up above 500 again. The density is coming up a little bit and the temperature has jumped. So what we could see is some reverberation and a kick up back here into yellow and red, but probably not much higher than five. And the reason I say that is because if you look at GOES proton flux, it's been going down. And this was the peak when we had KP5. So... That's indicative of a, of a calming space weather environment. Now, what we do have to worry about is an X 1.3 and an M 9.6, both headed to Earth. There's a little higher resolution from the GOES X-ray flux here. You could probably just bring that in. There it is. Now, what's interesting is I'm about to sh show you some of the uh, SOHO videos I made of this flare and this flare. But right around 8 o'clock UTC on March 31st, there's another coronal mass ejection from this C flare. So there's actually three or four CMEs happening all at once here. And this is all coming from AR2975. It just did it again, producing another very strong flare, almost an X flare at magnitude M9.6. It peaked at 1835 UT with a Type 2 solar radiation emission recorded by the U.S. Air Force, suggesting that a CME emerged. Uh, so our prediction is that we we're going to get a little higher, April 2nd and 3rd into the 4th, than this uh, event. Because uh, just by magnitude, just by magnitude alone, the X1.3 is seven times greater than the M4.0. And this one is six times greater. So these are much larger in magnitude than the tiny M flares that created this instability here. Boom. So we should be looking for something very different and a little bit, expect a little bit more than KP5. Now, a hyperactive sunspot we know is now dozens of flares. And there is that area in question there and there's the x flare doesn't look very significant but let's take a look at it here so the first video that we're going to show you is lasco c2 and it will be from the 29th through the current uh data set that they're giving us 
And so let's let it run through here. I'll slow it down a bit so it doesn't go back by so quick. But what you're going to see is here, boom, that first CME, another CME that's halo, and then the third CME, and then the X flare would be after this, but they're not showing that. So we're going to see the first X 1.3 just as we turn into the 30th. Boom. And the C6 right there. And the other M9.6 is not up yet. So let's load up C3 and see, take a look at what that looks like. So here we are over at Lasco C3, same time frame, and we'll play this through. We'll also slow it down a little bit for you. So just as we turn into the 30th, you're going to see a glitch and then the X1.3 glitching. Boom! There's the halo. And then you'll see the C flare halo there. Then another one, which is off the backside, I think, back there. So that was the last M flare that we began with. And then here we'll go into the 30th. There'll be some glitching. Then that Halo X 1.3. And then there'll be a coronal mass ejection from a C flare here. C6 at 8 p.m. UTC. And then a flare off the backside. But the, uh, the 9.6 is not showing up. So that's what we have so far. Now, the Enlil Spiral Solar Wind Prediction is still showing us the two M flares. They haven't updated it with the X flare information, maybe because of the C flare CME, the multiple CMEs, and this could be a cannibal CME event. Now, earlier today, the NASA Solar Wind Prediction, the Signet Streamer, was showing the X flare, but they have since taken it down. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like now. Now, earlier today, this was showing that X flare, but it's now just showing that flare off the backside that we just showed you. Um, and in fact, has erased the X flare data. I don't know why that is and why the Enlil hasn't been updated yet. It's suppression of information. They want to get the information first before anyone else does. That's why they're showing this five day old animation here. I mean, these CMEs already hit us and have already passed, and the new data is not up. So, sign of the times. But what we do know is that there are two large flares with CMEs, including a C flare in between with another CME. So, three coronal mass ejections headed our way April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and they're not sharing the data with us. There's a coronal mass ejection here. There's one, whoa, I think on this spike here, and then here again. It could be one of these two. I don't have the right chart up. <laughs> but a couple of things that we, we should go over here. An X1 is not a big X flare. An X100 would be an X big X flare. An X50 is a big X flare. X20 is a big X flare. Even an X9, in my opinion, would be a big X flare. I think X8 or 9 could start to affect the grid, potentially. Anything bigger than that and definitely be massive effects on the Earth. A grid down scenario could be X15 or greater, depending on where it hits, how it hits, and the, the nature of the magnetic field on Earth. But an X1 is, could cause some problems, but it's not a large X flare. It's the lowest X flare possible, X1. M9.6 is the largest M flare. So you could say this was the largest M flare with a CME we've seen in a while, which would be true. But still, this one is orders of magnitude bigger than the M9.6. And in the morning, we'll have more information uh, on what's going on here, and we could give you an update tomorrow night at the hotel as we head over to the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange tomorrow. Hope you got something out of the video. Two large coronal mass ejections, three potentially cannibal scenario, are headed our way April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. We will be in geomagnetic storm. How bad? Well, we'll know more when we have more data. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. We love you. The sun, well, it's waking up in a big way. Hey, hey, we love you. That's a boom to knowledge.